Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the IYNTC 10 Great Escape Destinations to Wine For in 2021. Um, we just come over from uh, Sicily uh, and landed now in Quebec. Uh, and we're here with um, Christine Mansoui, who's an uh, expert on uh, all, all of ca Canadian wine destinations, is going to um, uh, give us an, an interesting presentation about from, from east to the west coast. So welcome, Christine. Thank you, Anthony. Um, for those of you first timers, uh, of course, on the right, you have um, a chat facility where you can say hello. So, so Christine, fellow paisano, as we say in Spanish, Judith Lewis uh, is with us. She's, so she's hot on, uh, she lo loves Ontario wines, if you want to. Excellent. Give us some recommendations, or maybe she'll give us some recommendations. So there, say hello from uh, Brazil. We've got Brazil, we've got France, we've got Hungary, Budapest, Las Vegas. So oh, they're up early. That's Robin. <laughs> Must be about five or six in the morning there. Okay, so do say hello. And of course, more importantly, if you have any questions for Christine, then uh, please post them and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So as always, we've got um, a poll question for you, and this is a quite, maybe a tough one for some. Uh, let me share it with you, uh, read it out for those of you watching the replay. Uh, so in which of these wine regions was the first Canadian ice wine to be made? Was it Niagara? Okanagan Valley, Quebec Eastern Townships, or Nova Scotia. So all vote now. So Niagara is 70, 80% popular there. Nova Scotia, nobody's going for Nova Scotia. The freezing, isn't it, in Nova Scotia? Freezing cold in, in the winter. <laughs> okay, well, as always, the answer to the question is in the presentation. And if you get it right, uh, you get the special prize at the end. So let's hand you over now to Christine, who's going to uh, describe the cool climate destinations of Canada. Thank you so much, Anthony. So let me just open the presentation here. Excellent. So welcome everyone to today's webinar, Emerging Cool Climate Wine Destinations. I'm Christine. I will be hosting uh, the presentation today. I'm the owner of Kikiko Wine Events. I'm actually based in Quebec Eastern Townships. And we are a company who specialize in wine events, such as virtual tastings, wine tours. And we also provide um, professional training and workshop programs for tourism and hospitality professionals. I am also a wine consultant and wine ambassador for the Canadian wine industry. So in today's webinar, um, I will... I will show you why Canada is one of the top destinations in the world, but also um, take you to a wine tour from uh, the, the Okanagan, British Columbia to Niagara on the Lake, and we'll finish in Quebec Eastern Townships. So first of all, what is a cool climate wine region? According to uh, climatologist Dr. Gregory Jones, cool climate wine regions have an average growing season temperatures from 13 to 15 degrees Celsius and from 800 to 1,500 growing degrees uh, days. So First, Canada with our very rough winters and snowstorms. 
So let's start our journey in Canada, um, Okanagan Valley. It's in the British Columbia province. It's on the west part of Canada. Uh, it's very distinctive because of the climate. It's very dry, very warm. And in the southern part, it's even a semi-desertic uh, kind of weather. So you can find snakes in the south Okanagan, which is uh, very uh, not common to Canada. I remember the first time I visited uh, the Okanagan, I was just blown away by, first of all, the beautiful scenery, the beautiful mountains, but because of the amazing weather and, of course, the very dry, um, the very dry summers. So it was awarded number one region in the world in 2014 by Often Post magazine. Uh, there are about more than 185 wineries, um, more than 8,000 acres, and the first winery was established in 1932. So here's the map of the Okangan Valley. It's about 200 uh, kilometers long, so not that wide. It takes about an hour and a half to go from south to the northern part of the valley. Uh, Osoyoos, being in the south, is just next to the Washington border, so very warm. And there's, there's about five to six degrees difference in temperature from the south to the north. So we'll go three, to three different uh, leading wineries that I would present to you and their approach to wine tourism as uh, leading wineries in the, the advance of uh, Canadian wine industry. So the first winery is Black Hills Estate Winery. It's located in Osoyoos. Uh, well, Oliver, just next to Osoyoos, it's on the Black Stage uh, bench, which is a very famous uh, microclimate in the Okanagan because it is very warm and most of the Bordeaux blends are grown there. Uh, it was one of the first more sophisticated boutique estate wineries, very small production, and they were the first as well to offer seated guided tastings as the model of Napa Valley wineries uh, offering a very immersive uh, wine experience. Uh, ex uh, yes. So the wine experience center is uh, next to the cellar. So there's the cellar winery facility where they make the wines and there's the wine experience center, which I will show you next. It has a beautiful contemporary um, modern kind of ar architecture, a beautiful poolside to host events, a uh, gorgeous view on the vineyards and on the mountains. Uh, so it's pretty much one of the beautiful um, wineries that you can see in the valley. Uh, one of the major attractions there is, uh, like I said, private events. Uh, they host uh, party uh, release, like the Nota Bene release party. Uh, Nota Bene is their flagship wine, uh, Bordeaux blend. So every year they host, uh, they invite all, all types of guests and celebrities to celebrate the new vintage. And Black Hills Estate Winery is very uh, unique and uh, a leader in wine education. All the staff working there are either sommeliers or wine experts. Uh, they're very um, focused on wine sales and training programs and marketing strategies. So all the staff are very knowledgeable and they have now a restaurant on site and they do food and wine pairing. So it's very great uh, every time I visit them to see uh, how much knowledgeable are the staff. They also do, like you see on the left, uh, riddle specific tastings uh, that, that pairs with uh, all the different wines. So you have the Syrah glass, uh, Chardonnay glass, which makes the experience um, uh, very interesting. And of course, the premium award-winning wines. Uh, it was awarded Canada's Best Wines 2020 by Wine Align. You have in the middle the Nota Bene, which is the flagship wine Bordeaux blend. Uh, they also have very unique Rhone varietals such as Viognier and Syrah, and Sauvignon and Semillon. Uh, it's very rare in the Valley to find Sauvignon and Semillon, and they do a very unique uh, wine called Alibi. Uh, inspired by the Loire uh, Valley, so very crisp and fresh, a very unique wine. So definitely a, a winery to stop by if you're in the Okanagan Valley. Uh, like I said, um, very top-notch customer experience, sophisticated wines, and a premium experience. 
The second winery is Quellsgate Estate uh, Winery. It was established in 1989. It's one of the oldest wineries uh, in the valley. Uh, very pioneer. Uh, they were among the first to uh, grow Chardonnay in Pinot Noir. And they have now one of the oldest vines of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in the valley. They have more than 200 acres of vines now, and everything is uh, is, uh, is is firmly farmed. So Quellsgate has this gorgeous view on the Okanagan Lake, uh, and very famous to host farm-to-table winemakers dinners. And of course, a beautiful spot to host private events and weddings. They also just added a new uh, market where, where they sell uh, and they partnership with local farmers and artisan. Oh, sorry about that. And artisan. Uh, they have cheeses, local vegetables and fruits. And if you stop by there, absolutely have to try BC oysters called Kushi. Uh, they're some of the best I've had uh, in uh, in my life. So, um, and Old Vine Restaurants is one of the top restaurants in Canada as well. So it's very French style, uh, fine dining cuisine. You can have more traditional uh, European style cuisine to pair with the wines. And what I like about Quail's Gate is very the dedication to uh, research and innovation. Um, now there's sustainable practices. Some of the vines are uh, certified organic, uh, very consistent in the quality of the wines and acclaimed winemakers uh, coming from all over the world, New Zealand, Australia. So they have very uh, great value for the wines. Uh, one of their uh, really good wines is their Rosé, uh, French style, uh, Provence Rosé. Of course, Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir, uh, very uh, older vines are excellent products. And one of their unique products is the Optima that you can see there on the right. It's a uh, sweet wine, dessert wine, late harvest, but it's also butch butchertized affected. So it uh, has been influenced by the famous Sauterne. So very unique from this winery and very an outstanding product that you absolutely have to try to get. So the third winery in the, the Okanagan uh, is the iconic Mission Hill family estate. Uh, of course, with their amazing architecture, um, it was established in 1966. So one of the pioneer wineries uh, by founder Anthony von Mendel. He's a um, very famous uh, business uh, in the wine business, a uh, man who made a fortune and invested in, um, in this winery. He could have chosen anywhere else in the world, but he decided to invest in the Okanagan Valley. Yeah, it, it has actually won five-time winery of the year. Uh, they have over 900 acres of vines. So a very a major, um, a major winery in the valley. It's uh, definitely a destination winery. Um, because as soon as you arrive on site, you have this beautiful outdoor exposition. Uh, they have fine dining, they have underground uh, caves as well. So you can just uh, plan to stay the whole day and visit the winery and do private tastings and tours. They also have an outdoor amphitheater where they host these huge events. They do immersive tasting wine experiences. Uh, because they have so much uh, space to host it and beautiful gardens on site and this also beautiful table, fine dining table. They're very de dedicated to excellent and terroir-driven wines. Um, actually, their Pinot Noir um, in 2013 uh, won the best Pinot Noir in the world by Decanter Awards, which is a huge award. Um, so um, they're very proud. They're, they've been doing consistent uh, quality wines and very investing in the winemaking facility. And what I like about their wines is they have three different collections. They have the reserve wines, which are more classic and uh, age-worthy wines, but for everyday wine as well. They have the terroir wines, which are more driven by the soils. Um, some of the vines uh, are organic and also different types of clones and the legacy uh, collection, which is um, small quantity, only on the best vintages and everything is hand harvested. 
So let's continue our trip to Niagara Peninsula, Ontario. So it is Canada's largest, most and productive wine region with over 17,000 acres, uh, 100 wineries, maybe more now than 100 wineries. And the first winery was established in 1975, which makes it uh, the oldest uh, vineyard in Canada. So Niagara Peninsula is divided in 10 sub-appellations. Um, and which makes the terroir very unique. It has this, this microclimate with the Lake Ontario and also with the Niagara Escarpment uh, that's from Bim Bimsville Bench to Short Hills Bench that make a very um, unique uh, microclimate. Of course, when you talk about Niagara, you cannot forget Niagara Falls, which is uh, one of the most touristic place to visit in the area. And it's only 25 minutes drive to Niagara on the lake. Speaking about Niagara on the lake, it is the heart of Ontario uh, wine country uh, and pioneer of cool climate wines. Uh, they're very focused on specific grape varietals uh, that they were uh, pioneer uh, to to plant and to grow. Uh, some of the white varietals that's mostly um, uh, produced is Riesling, Riesling and Chardonnay. Uh, and in the red varietals, Cabernet Franc and Pinot Noir. They also have uh, what we call hybrids. It's a crossing of two different types of Vitis vinifera and adapted to the very uh, rough and cold weather, such as Vidal, which is very distinctive from Ontario and, and Canada, and Baco Noir as well. And of course, Niagara is home of uh, the famous ice wine. Uh, actually, Iniskilin Winery uh, won um, a Bordeaux Vin Expo Award uh, in 1991. So since then, it has been very famous and internationally long for their uh, ice wine. Ice wine is also regulated in Niagara, so it has to be harvested at minus 8 uh, degrees Celsius. And it has to be produced with either Vidal grape, which is uh, the product you see here on the picture, or Riesling, Gewürztraminer, uh, Cabernet Franc. So a very uh, beautiful product and unique to Canada. Uh, we have been lucky to to been uh, able to make it uh, every year um, because people think with the climate change, uh, it's no longer possible. But minus eight in Canada is easy to get. So. Sometimes it takes longer uh, if you have uh, months in December and January that's, uh, that are a little bit uh, warmer, uh, but uh, they have been able to make it uh, consistently uh, in the past years. And also Canada is the number one producer of ice wine in, in the world. They also have a rec uh, international recognitions for uh, different uh, style and uh, of product. There's a Cave Spring Winery here on the left uh, that had that does mostly uh, Rieslings. Uh, they have different uh, kind of um, uh, residual sugar in their products. They have really dry Rieslings to the more sweet ones to the sparkling Rieslings. Uh, but it's definitely uh, one of the wineries that are most uh, internationally known for their beautiful Riesling. And what is particular of Niagara is they're really focused on the terroir and showing the expression of the grapes. So uh, when you taste uh, different Riesling from all over the world, you can recognize this uh, particular notes of, uh, of green apple, citrus, very mineral, petrol style Riesling from uh, Niagara. Uh, also, Chardonnays are doing very well. Uh, there's a lot of different wineries that won uh, international prize, but Le Clos Jardin is one of the main products that's been internationally uh, known and acclaimed. Uh, very burgundy style types of uh, products. Also, the third product is uh, Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is very um, is doing very well in the, in the valley. Um, it's in between style of. Bordeaux and, and Loire, so it's a bit more uh, ripe and fuller bodied than the ones from the Loire, uh, but definitely something you have to try uh, from Niagara. And of course, the Pinot Noir, which is, uh, I think it's one of the terroir or predilection of uh, Pinot Noir, uh, either in Burgundy, in Oregon, and some in other places, but it makes very, uh, very beautiful Pinot Noir. 
And uh, also what's really distinctive on Niagara, Niagara region is the winemaking education. Uh, there's Brock University, Niagara College, uh, where they offer viticulture and winemaking programs. They also have a teaching winery, uh, flying winemakers. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, winemakers that have uh, joint ventures uh, in different parts of the world, like Chile, Argentina, uh, South Africa. So it's very interesting to see um, winemakers from Canada uh, working in internationally and um, and famous for, for their winemaking. Also, Niagara has a lot of wineries who uh, invest in innovation. This is uh, the beautiful um, building of Stratus Winery in Niagara on the Lake. Uh, so it's a building designed to make premium wines uh, because they build uh, the, wine, the winery. Uh, so, it was, um, so it was certified lead. So it's actually the first winery to have the certification in uh, Canada and in the world. Um, so everything is sustainable. Even in the cellar, uh, they're not using any pumps or machine. Everything has uh, to be uh, very gentle and um, environmentally friendly. So it's definitely a, a place you have to stop by and check out the, the, the beautiful architecture and definitely one of the leading winery um, in Niagara. Also, what makes uh, Niagara one of the best places in internationally recognized is because the wine festival and events, uh, all kinds of events uh, all year long, are Niagara grape and vine, uh, the cool climate, Chardonnay celebration that I try to go each year. Um, people from winemakers from all over the world go there to celebrate um, cool climate Chardonnays, ice wine trails, uh, so very dynamic and um, and there's always a reason to go back to Niagara. So we'll finish our journey in Quebec Eastern Townships. Actually, these numbers are for uh, Quebec regions all over. So in Quebec, in generally, there's 146 wineries, uh, about 2,000 acres. And the first winery was established in 1985. So a much younger industry. This is a map of uh, the Eastern Township's uh, municipalities, uh, divided in eight municipalities. Um, Chemin des Cantons in French is Eastern Township trails that easily can be done uh, with a car. Of course, you need a car because it's very wide uh, and you need a couple of days as well to visit the region because it is very vast. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, where the, wine, the official wine route is, Brom Missisqua. And Dunham is actually the capital of uh, wine here in Quebec, where all the oldest uh, wineries were established. There are about 22 wineries in that area. So, of course, uh, Eastern Townships is known for luxury retreats, but also for its natural landscape, scenic roads, uh, biking trails, an award-winning establishment such as Hovey Manor, it's uh, Relais Chateau, it's one of, it's one of the, uh, the only Relais Chateau uh, hotel in Quebec. Uh, Ripple Co, five-star uh, hotel. There's also a lot of spas where you can have wellness retreats. And culture and savoir-faire is very unique here in Eastern Townships. Uh, we have lots of cheese factories who won uh, international awards for their, the quality of their cheeses. Here you can see on the right the uh, Abbey Saint-Benoît, which is one of the main uh, attractions in the Memphrey Magog area with gorgeous views on, on Memphrey Magog Lake. And of course, Quebec is home of ice cider. Uh, here on the left, you can see Christian Bartomeuf. He's uh, the inventor of ice cider. Um, in about the 1980s, he also founded the first uh, winery here in Quebec, uh, also in, at the same period. Um, ice cider is very particular because it has to be harvested at minus 20 degrees, so very cold and extreme condi conditions. And they cannot produce a lot because, of course, um, the apple is frozen, and when you press it, it, it gives that delicate uh, nectar but very, very small amount. And these past few years have been difficult for ice cider um, 
because we had warm, we're very warm um, summers and, and, and winters. So it's actually uh, makes it more special and unique because they don't produce a lot. And actually, at some point, I cider was, was exported in 42 different countries. So definitely one of the main uh, flagship product of uh, Quebec. And of course, Quebec is known for its extreme viticulture. Uh, winemakers uh, had to be very creative because uh, they wanted to plant vitis vinifera, such as Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Noir, even some plants in some Cabernet Sauvignon. Here on the right, you can see uh, high tunnels uh, that a more recent wine, winery uh, tried to uh, grow uh, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, in order to get few more degrees and to grow uh, grapes that usually we cannot grow here. And on the left, you can see uh, Les Pervenches, which is uh, the winery, one of the first wineries to produce Chardonnay. They have um, the oldest vines of Chardonnay here in Quebec, which are 25 years old. Uh, so pretty young for some uh, for some regions in the world. And they actually have this unique technique uh, with hay, um, that they put uh, under the vines so to protect them from, from the cold and, and the frost. So here in Quebec, we have really distinctive wines and a lot of diversity. Um, on the left, you can see uh, one of the oldest winery in Quebec, Orpaillard, who produce a really beautiful uh, champagne, traditional method, I shouldn't say champagne, traditional method sparkling, uh, very dry, and it's made with hybrid grape. Uh, the Vidal that's also cultivated in uh, Niagara and Seval, which are very specific grapes that had a lot, lots of aromas, peach, um, a little bit like Sauvignon Blanc uh, with that citrus grapefruit character, uh, beautiful to make sparkling wines. Um, the second product there is 100% uh, Vidal. I think Vidal is one of the most promising grape uh, to make whites here in the regions, uh, very dry, mineral, crisp uh, type of white wines, higher in acidity, of course, but also lower in alcohol. In the middle, you can see um, Les Pervenches, um, which is also certified organic and biodynamic, 100% uh, Chardonnay, beautiful Chardonnay. Uh, Baco is a red varietal that's also cultivated in Niagara. It does beautiful reds, uh, similar to Pinot Noir, but has more that leather, black fruit, dark fruit character. And of course, Van Glass ice wine that here in Quebec we uh, produce really well because we have the best condition to make it. So the approach here of uh, the winemakers and viticulturists here is very sharing the passion and vision. Uh, most of the winemakers uh, work uh, in the wine shop or will also always be available to talk to the customers and share their vision, which just makes it more of a approachable down to earth uh, experience. Uh, they also invite uh, guests to participate to harvest. So it has a little bit of European uh, smaller scale uh, wineries that's very uh, pleasant and enjoyable. So finally, what is the future of cool climate wines? As a born and raised Canadian, I had the chance to follow the development of the industry and I'm so surprised how things go fast. A few years ago, about 30 years ago, people were called crazy to plant uh, vines here in Quebec and Canada. And today we can find Canadian wines in one of the top restaurants in the world, in London, uh, Dubai, and also in Paris. Uh, so I definitely believe there's a future for cool climate wines uh, because of their specific uh, quality of very low alcohol, uh, more crisp, but delicate aromas. Um, and I believe Canada is one of the leader in uh, cool and modern winemaking. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Yes, uh, very, very enjoyable. <laughs> Not a region I visited. I presume you visited uh, Europe, European wineries yourself? Uh, yes, many times. Mm -hmm. Right. Because uh, so we got some questions here. I just, uh, but I wanted to, to ask you one. So I noticed the wineries you showed in the presentation on the uh, large side. Yes. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, how, how do you, 
main differences are there between wine tourism in Canada and say wine tourism in Italy? Uh, what, what differences would you immediately would come to mind? Um, I would say um, because Italy has a lot of tradition um, with food, but but also in the wine in the, the way they cultivate uh, wine. Uh, so the the main uh, difference I would say is is the history. The history here in Canada, have, everything has to be built. It's very young industry, so. Here, uh, they share their innovation, how they do the wine, their winemaking process, uh, but a bit less about the tradition and the history because it's so young. So, of course, in Italy, when you go there, they, they have so many stories to tell about how the grandparents did the wines and all that. So, uh, I would be the, 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 I would say the big difference is uh, about sharing uh, uh, the history and the tradition and, and the way the experience is, uh, is given to, to the guests. Okay, so while you were presenting, there's a few debates going on in the chat here. Okay. Uh, so Pavel's asking where is it possible to buy, if it's possible to buy Canadian wines in Europe, especially in Germany. Germany? And, uh, um, if that person can send me an email, I will try to find out if, um, if, if there's wine exported there. I know there's some, like I said, in Paris, uh, London, and few um in few places in europe but uh germany you have to check i'm not mm. oh actually well the answer is yes because uh okay. folk from germany confirmed that it is available and invited people to uh in his best german to contact him via email so so pavel the answer is yes uh there's also a bit of a de debate on the bac au noir um if, it, if it's only part vinifera or not? If it's uh, so, that that was from from Kim. But if we go later up the chat, uh, let me see how I can find it. Well, uh, what what's the answer? Is it, uh, Shannon saying uh, yes, Kim. I think it's half vinifera and half uh, riparia. The vinifera is. Full, full blanche, but uh, don't know the other one. So, do you have any? Can you shed any light? Um, so, Baco would be, uh, they call it the Amer American rustic grape. Um, so, it might not be um, a crossing of two specific uh, Vitis vinifera, but more um, uh, species on its own that was developed in, in um, firstly, in, in America for. Um, for more rustic uh, and, and cooler climate uh, destinations, wine regions. Right. Uh, going on to the, you mentioned uh, cider uh, was also made, and Yegas from uh, South Africa is asking: Is the only base ingredient is the only base ingredient permitted for cider apples in Canada? Um, because here in Canada, uh, especially Eastern Townships, but other parts as uh, the Montérégie uh, part, which is closer from Montreal area, we have a lot of apple apple trees and orchards. Um, I know they have been making some ciders elsewhere in Ontario, but they don't have the condition like minus 20 uh, Celsius degrees is very, very cold. And even here, sometimes we don't get it. So. Uh, it would be very difficult um, if you do the classical way, which is harvesting on the tree, uh, because some winemakers would harvest a little bit earlier at minus 10, like the high swine, and then leave the juice outside so it can froze again. So that's another technique. It's not the traditional technique, but it's another technique to do um, ice cider. And apples being the only ingredient. Exactly. The only yeah. ingredient. Okay. Uh, so you um, <clears throat> saying connectivity problems? Uh, not not on your phone, but on the computer. What the whole webinar jam is is designed to work fine on Google Chrome or Firefox. So um, if you're using another browser, that may be the cause of the problem. So do, do, do um, if you're using a, that Microsoft thing. Can't remember the name, Elite or whatever it's called. <laughs> try, try Google Chrome. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, okay. So do you have any more questions? If you do, uh, there's a conversation, a lot of conversations going on um, between people there. Great presentation. Makes me nostalgic for my home country. <laughs> uh, and uh, Cyril, I'm not sure I pronounced your name right, right there. Cyril, Cyril would be in English, I guess. What makes uh, Canadian wines distinctive uh, is, is the question. Um, well, we didn't, I didn't speak about Nova Scotia today because uh, I only had 30 minutes, but it depends on the region. Um, I think it has, like I said, that cool climate character, let's say Chardonnays and Pinot Noir from Niagara, uh, with, um, uh, let's say you have uh, Pinot Noir from Chile, you have more that dry, um, uh, dry fruit, character, fig, and all that. And on the Canadian Pinot, you'll have more blackberries, spices, a little more delicate aromas, and, and more freshness as well. So all the wines are, I would say, easier to drink with, with that light alcohol content and that freshness. Uh, I would say it's particular for from the wines here, but it depends on the winemaker and the winemaking process as well. When you say light and alcohol, are you talking eight, nine degrees? No. <laughs> More less than that. It depends. More. Niagara is, is warmer than Quebec for sure. So Quebec rest will be uh, from 10 to 12 degrees and, and then maybe 12 to 14. Uh, so it's a regular alcohol content, but it feels lighter on, on, on the mouthfeel because of the acidity. Okay. And, and Kim's uh, contributing, saying that... Uh, uh, we make perry or pear cider in Ontario. So uh, pears, I guess, as well as apples. Yes. Uh, Pavel screaming out for your email address, which has kindly been provided by Kim. So there you go. But not to worry. Uh, we're going to um, make the presentation available at the end of the um, webinar so you can uh, contact um, Christine directly. Her email is at the beginning of the presentation. Excellent presentation, Cyril, if that, if that was the correct pronunciation, thank you. <laughs> um, that is, uh, I, I'm assuming it's a he, Cyril, <laughs> uh, asking, um, uh, do, do you have a favorite um, um, Canadian, favorite wine Canadian region yourself? Oh my God, that's the worst question to ask. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Riesling, Ontario Riesling from Niagara. I love them because they're very dry um, and have that distinctive, like I said, um, quality and, and aromas. Um, Chardonnays from Niagara as well. Uh, in BC, um, they do very good Bordeaux blends, um, and, but also Pinot Noir and Chardonnay is hard to choose. And in Quebec, I would say um, sparkling wines, uh, the white wines made from Vidal. Um, of course, ice cider are amazing. So I have too many favorites. <laughs> okay, Kim's suggesting that uh, Neat should, should include uh, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward County, and Vancouver Island wines <laughs> in the next presentation, part two of um, Cool Climates. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she also asked, um, how did you get around to choosing the wineries you chose for, for this presentation? Um, I had the chance to visit these wine regions quite often. Um, I think it's, it's with their investment um, and leadership in the industry, how they stand out and how they, they bring um yeah, be, because a lot of wine, new wineries are, are trying to do different stuff, but there's also always been uh, the pioneer wineries, like the ones you've seen on, in the presentation that had lead the way uh, for other wineries to do the same. Okay, so at the beginning of the presentation we gave, uh, we put up a poll for you in which these wine regions was the first Canadian ice wine to be made. 73% went for Niagara. Nobody went for Nova Scotia. Uh, the answer is, in fact, Christine? Actually, I didn't answer the question. That's funny. 
I, I left the mystery. Um, so the first, um, I think 90%, 95% of people think it's Niagara, but uh, it was actually in British Columbia in the 70s, the first winery to produce ice wine. Uh, but Niagara is still the number one um, producer of ice wine in Canada. About 80% 80, 80 of um, all Canadian ice wine is made in Ni Niagara. So the right, so Columbia. <laughs> which wine region was the first then? Uh, Brit uh, British Columbia, Okanagan Valley. Yeah, in, in the 70s. Okanagan Valley, yeah. So I wasn't sure that if that was in British Columbia. I would have gone from Ontario. <laughs> Right, so as so, if you got that right, uh, seventeen percent of you did get it right. Uh, so you're welcome to, because um, Christine has kindly agreed to share her presentation with you, which I believe I'm sharing with you now. So if you would like to um, take download a copy, uh, please do so now. Unfortunately. If, you're watching this as a replay, you won't be able to download uh, the file, but uh, you can, of course, contact Christine and uh, I'm sure she'll be delighted to email you um, a link to, to get the um, presentation. But of course, you can watch it as many times as you'd like on the winepleasures.com. No, not winepleasures.com, youtube.com winepleasures uh, uh, YouTube channel. Okay. So let's just see if we've got any more questions. There are lots of thank yous, brilliant, fantastic. Must be there, got to be there, we've got to visit. Uh, yeah. So uh, we did actually um, get a request one year, several years ago, 2016 from Coloni. Col Coloni? Coloni? Uh, Coloni, yes, to, to host the um, International Wine Tourism Conference, but nothing um, oh, wow. came of it. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so maybe we'll be there one day to to um, for, so, for somewhere in Canada to host the International Wine Tourism Conference. Okay. So it just leaves me to say thank you very much to Christine Mansui for for volunteering to to provide this uh, interesting um, grape escape destination, which we chose as one of the ten uh, grape escape destinations to wine for in 2021. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everyone. And just uh, before we go, just to um, let you know uh, where we'll be next week, next Thursday, Grape Escape Destination Day, Thursday. Uh, we'll be uh, at 1600, four o'clock in the afternoon in um, Portugal with Madalena Vidigal. And uh, she'll be presenting the, the whole country uh, as a Grape Escape destination. So tune in for that next Thursday. That's next Thursday, 4th of March. And following...